Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm Nikki Burnett. Um, this is cool. I think we have some people that are going to join us from Australia today. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and so I want to remind you, if you have questions, I have my Q&A up. So feel free to jump in if you have questions about anything. Um, other than that, let's just get started. Um, let me know if there's anything that you need. And let's talk about toxic cleaning products. Um, this is a, a little bit on my heart, I think, because you know, multiple reasons. We have, um, you know, in our world so much illness, um, you know, our, our families, our furry family members. Um, I recently had two of my guys pass um, and both from cancer and I'm about as, I'm pretty clean. And so there are just things in our environment that we can't control, but there are lots of things that we can control. And I think it's really important to keep that in mind um, as we move through our days, uh, what we put on our body and in our environment is just as important as what we put in our body. So let's talk about taking the toxic out of cleaning. Um, and here we go. Okay. So one of the things that I think is really important is, you know, we go to the store, um, and we, you know, may see that a, a, a product says it's a green cleaner. Um, we assume that it's being sold, that it's safe. Uh, and <laughs> You know, the same with food, just because it's being sold and just because it says all natural or um, whatever the marketing is for it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. Um, you know, not everything has a warning label, um, you know, and, you know, and you know, you can always call a hotline if something's ingested. But I feel like if something says toxic, if ingested, you know, maybe something that we want to keep away from um, now, household cleaning products um, have so many chemicals in them and they're not fully disclosed, they aren't approved, and they're causing us lots of problems. Um, you know, I'm a person, you know, we talk about our, um, our dogs and our kiddos, you know, we're all close to the ground, um, on the floor, you know, in the house, outside of the house. You know, we talk about, um, you know, a little bit off topic, but the fertilizers and the chemicals we put in the yard, you know, this stuff, this stuff gets into our bodies and our kids' bodies and our dogs' and cats' bodies. Um, so this, some, this is just, it's not safe. And I, I like to sit on the floor. I want it to be clean. It might be hairy, but I, I want it to be clean. Okay, so an interesting uh, uh, statistic is there are 62 toxic chemicals um, in a household. So this is according to environmental experts. Um, and these chemicals that are linked to asthma, cancer, um, reproductive disorders, we'll dig into to a lot of this, hormone disruption, neurotoxicity, um, and they've been found to create lung damage. And you know what they're showing now, which is really interesting as well, is people who, whose job is to go in and clean, whether it's homes or office buildings, things like that, that they're showing that these chemicals are creating as much damage as smoking 20 cigarettes a day. Okay, think about that. Um, it's really disturbing um, and sad. And so going back to our pets, I tend to jump ahead because, you know, it's our dogs that are, you know, kind of always on my mind. Um, you know, I don't have kiddos, but I have lots of friends and families with kiddos. And I really try to make a point when I'm talking to them to watch what you're cleaning with. Um, and so they're always on the floor and, um, you know, rolling around on the floor. I know I'm rolling around on the floor with my dogs all the time. So the vapors can linger um, for however long they do. Um, and then, uh, so looking for pet safe cleaners, looking for, you know, non-toxic chemicals to put in your yard, or let's not even put anything in the yard, maybe some healthy organic fertilizer. But, you know, if you're having a problem with your, um, with the dandelions, pick them and eat them. It's free salad, right? It's good for you. So the roots, eat the root. You can saute the root, um, eat the leaves. Leaves are a diuretic. The root is what's good for the liver. So keep that in mind. Let's not poison what is great food and it's free. Free is as cheap as it gets. Um, okay. So there are a lot of the things, um, you know, like for surface cleaners, um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, on our counters that, you know, anything, we put food on the counters all the time. 
So make sure that you're cleaning with good, healthy, safe products, um, clear of the toxins because we don't want it in our food. We don't want to ingest it. We don't want to breathe it. All right. Okay. So what are considered the most dangerous cleaning products? That's a hard one because they're all, so many of them are just um, incredibly dangerous. But what they're showing is the most corrosive products are drain cleaners, oven cleaners, and then this one surprised me, um, toilet bowl cleaners. So um, they can cause severe burns. Um, they can cause damage, you know, burns on the eyes, damage to the eyes and skin if ingested um, to the throat and to the esophagus. Um, you know, some of the ingredients that are included in them are bleach, chlorine bleach, ammonia. These things are just really nasty, dangerous things. Um, and they produce fumes and they're really irritating and for those susceptible can trigger asthma attacks. Okay, so federal guidelines, which is a little bit of a joke. It's a big joke. Um, cleaning products, unlike foods and beverages and cosmetics and other personal care products, and not even a lot of those, um, but they're not required by federal law to list ingredients. So think about that. They don't put on the labels what's in the product that you're cleaning with. <laughs> what is that about? And so what their claim is that they, if they provide the full list, then it goes against their rights to keep the formula um, preserved and private which again is a joke, right? It's, it's such a terrible thing that they do. Um, but only 7% of the cleaning products on the market actually disclose their contents. So really, the manufacturers have no reason to avoid any of the risky um, chemicals, uh, even if they clean well, you know, even if they create issues like asthma and lung damage and, and cancer, um, and uh, skin rashes and things like that. So um, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, um, the federal agency charged with protecting consumers from thousands of these types of consumer products have only 500 employees nationwide. Okay, that's, that's nothing. This means that a lot of the, um, the dangerous chemicals slip through the cracks. Um, and then of course there are lots and lots of recalls. Sorry. All right. Okay. So on top of what we find in our homes, around our homes, you know, we are inundated with toxins. Um, it just is a part of life. And I think it's more than, than intended. Um, we sometimes uh, have a hard time detoxifying these toxins. Um, but you know, your body is constantly fighting you against this stuff. So again, it goes back to, we can't always avoid what's outside, but let's try to avoid what's in the house. And so manufacturers will argue that the small amounts of the toxic household cleaners, um, are really not likely an issue, but you know, and it's like, you know, taking a, you know, going and getting in the pool. If you have a, if you're a swimmer and you swim every day and you're in chlorine every day, this is a problem, right? Um, if you have a pool, if you have a hot tub um, and you are in chlorine every day, this is an issue. Why? So bleach, it kills bacteria. It's, they put it in our water. They put it in everything. Besides the fact that it can dry out our skin, turn our hair colors, things like that, you are essentially creating, you're, you're kind of taking an antibiotic, right? It's absorbed through the skin um, it is an antibiotic. That's why they put it in our water to keep us safe, right? Um, which I kind of hate that a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's killing our good bugs. And so what happens, you know, we may become dysbiotic, which is an imbalance of good and bad bacteria. The bad bacteria grows and the good bacteria is killed off. Um, you know, on top of that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of swimmers are just super type A swimmers. So you have um, too much exercise, not enough good bacteria, and then um, you know your immune system gets out of whack and you become inflamed and can create a whole bunch of, of issues. But even just for us that do it every now and then, um, it can create an issue. Um, all of that stuff is absorbed through the skin, right? And so um, what we need to consider is it's not just the you know every now and then one-off things. It's the it's the constant toxic burden 
that we live with. So the outside, all of the things that we clean with, all of our um, dryer sheets and um, uh, you know stuff that we wash our clothes in, um, you know whatever is we're cleaning our floor and our counters in, it's a constant inundation of these toxic chemicals that are creating a massive burden on our body. And so if you have listened to me much, I know my friends and family probably get really tired of hearing me talk about it, but epigenetics is a big deal. This is where, you know, true medicine and true, um, true individualized medicine and individualized nutrition can come into play. Epigenetics is essentially um, our, um, there are locations on our genes that have the ability to be turned and off. They can be turned on and off Due to, or with lifestyle factors, too much stress um, versus low stress, too much exercise, not enough exercise, the right food or the wrong food. Um, you know, so all of these lifestyle factors, our diseases are really lifestyle diseases. And so when we, when these diseases pop up, this is an epigenetic change and out the way that each of us expresses it individually is based on our epigenome. So we have the ability, if you've seen my website, if you've seen my cards, you'll see it says we do have control over our genetic destiny. And we absolutely do. But we want to feed ourselves properly and avoid as much as possible this toxic burden and I would also say, um, know your genetics. You know, this is what I do with my clients is I look at their genetics. And there are some people who are not good detoxifiers due to their genetics. And so understanding that is a big deal because you may, if, you, if, if my client is not detoxifying well, then it's going to be hard for me to help them to repair. But knowing that they don't detoxify well gives us both the ammo to help their body, to give them the nutrients, give them the therapeutic supplementation, those things that they need. Um, it may even just be going to the sauna, right? Um, in order to help the body detoxify this stuff. Okay. The chemical disease connection. And so we know that there is a chronic exposure to toxic fumes and chemicals no matter what. And so I've already said this once, this is considered our toxic burden or toxic load. And this is the accumulation of toxins in the body, in the tissues, in the liver. You know, the liver's job is to, to try to get rid of that stuff. Um, and again, it goes back to if you are having, if you're not a good detoxifier or things are just jammed up, right, due to too much going on, then, um, then you know, it can create even more of a toxic burden. Okay. So, other things that can create a toxic burden are going to be things like heavy metals. Um, some of us don't eliminate heavy metals very well. Um, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, um, all of these things can create fatigue, um, uh, you know, uh, and disease and inflammation. Um, and so I just keep saying it. I'm sorry, I can't stop saying it, but we need to do our best to keep it at a minimum. Um, and, you know, the big things then, you know, when I talk about um, our lifestyle diseases that we have, you know, it's heart disease, it's cancer, it's autoimmune disease, neurodegenerative degenerative diseases, fibromyalgia, the hormone imbalance, infertility, you know, all of these things I see in practice every single day. And so we look at labs and we understand why we're seeing these things and we make these changes. Um, whether it's stress reduction, changing your foods, again, supplementation, supporting the body and the different organ systems to allow it to function properly. Um, so one of the things that I really want to hit on to is the fact that a lot of these chemicals, um, whether it's the chemicals that are inside the house, um, used for the laundry, the cleaning, or outside, uh, you, the, say the Roundup, the glyphosate, things like that, those things are considerable hormone disruptors. They're, co they're called xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are essentially estrogen mim mimickers. And what happens is we have estrogen receptor sites, men and women, estrogen receptor sites all over our body on essentially every cell of the body. And what happens is these xenoestrogens come in and they bind to these estrogen receptor sites 
and they bind really tightly and they don't allow our own natural estrogen to do its job. So we end up having this inundation of estrogen, estrogen roaming around and roaming around. And a lot of people don't have the ability to detoxify that. And so we see things like the man boobs. Um, we see children uh, uh, developing early. We see uh, girls with their periods coming on early. We see severe PMS and PMDD that are massively disruptive, disruptive to the family. I mean, a, enough to where, um, you know, if, if there's a, a monthly week of rage that comes from a woman who has no ability to control it due to the hormones that are pumping through her body, you know, these things can end relationships and they can destroy families. And I say this, it seems extreme, but it's true because I've seen it. So um, this is not a joke. It's really not. And I have a hard time when I hear people say a little bit is not a big deal, but a little bit is a big deal because it's never a little bit. It's, it is constant no matter what, especially when there's so many different chemicals that can create these hormone disruptions. I mean, they're all considered xenoestrogens besides the fact that they're carcinogenic and um, can create inflammatory responses and that kind of thing. Um, all of them are considered xenoestrogens. So we have to figure this out and stop buying this trash. Um, if anything, I'm going <laughs> to just save our marriages, right? Save our families. Um, just, and I know that's, that's totally as extreme, but the fact is we are, if we don't stop, they will, you know, companies will keep selling them and we'll keep getting sicker and sicker. All right. We've got to, we've got to stop this stuff. It's just bad news. Okay, so let's dig into some of the different chemicals. Um, probably you've heard, well, you've probably heard of all of these, um, but they're all pretty nasty. So phthalates are pretty nasty little chemicals. And so they're in air fresheners. For the lo love of Pete, if you have an air freshener, throw it out unless it's, you know, essential oils or something like that. If you have a diffuser for your essential oils, that's amazing and it's beautiful and it works beautifully and it's therapeutic. But the stuff that you plug into the wall from you know these different stores i it just for one it kind of makes me sick to my stomach now if i walk into a place that has them i have to unplug them <laughs> i have family that will do that and i actually will unplug it and it's probably not very nice but i can't stand it um it's just it's it's nasty stuff and it's toxic um okay phthalates are in our dish soap um oh even in our toilet paper how sick is that i hate that um, and they extend the aromatic strength in scented products. So don't buy scented toilet paper. That's just kind of nasty. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, oh, that's just gross. Um, let's see. Again, they're known to disrupt hormone secretion and can cause infertility. Um, so exposure mainly occurs through inhalation, but it can be absorbed through the skin. Um, it's also in scented soap products. So think about the things that you're buying to put on your body, not just what you're cleaning with, but you know, your soaps, your deodorants, your shampoos, all of those things. Know what they're scented with. Essential oils, natural, um, natural essences, I guess. But you still got to be real careful because marketing is really tricky and they they make it sound really great and it's really, really not. Um, so the skin is your biggest detoxifying organ, right? But there are no safeguards with the skin. So it just pretty much takes everything in and it goes straight into the rest of your organs. All right. Okay, this is a big one. And I'm gonna tell you something that I do that may gross you out and that's okay, because I don't really care, um, but <laughs> it's what I do. Um, antibacterial doesn't mean it's safe. We have antibacterial everything, you know, shampoo and soap and the stuff that we go into the public restrooms um, and all of it's antibacterial on top of um, just being full of junk, right? The phthalates even. Um, and so they put triclosan, which is the antibacterial component, um, in dishwashing detergents, um, in, uh, you know, in, in well, and I guess that's kind of, those are the big things, the big things that you see um, in the public restrooms. Um, and they have been shown to promote the drug-resistant bacteria, right? So we have this problem, whether it's, 
for our, in our bodies or whether it's in our farms where we're killing all the good stuff and we are creating super bugs, super weeds that we can't control because, because our human involvement is you know, kind of going and screwing up the environment. And so we have to have a natural, healthy bacterial balance. So what I'm going to tell you that I do is if I go to a public restroom, I don't use their soap. Now I'll carry a nice, you know, antibacterial, like a alcohol based or, you know, some essential oil or something that I'll put on my hands afterwards because we still need to be smart and safe. There's lots of nasty stuff in those bathrooms and we got to be smart and safe, but I will not use their soap most of the time. Um, because it will disrupt our natural bacterial balance. And that includes our gut bacteria, um, our oral bacteria. So we have to have our, a good, you know, solid, healthy microbiome, which is a huge 70% of our immune system. It's a really important, it might be even be 70% of our mental and emotional health. That's where 70% of our serotonin is produced is in our gut, not in our brain. And it's all connected. So we, you know, if we keep doing this antibacterial stuff and, and we're afraid of touching things and we're afraid of getting out and playing in the dirt and we always have to be clean, we're creating more and more problems for ourselves, okay? So um, on that note, and I don't think it's trickle sand, but I can't help but to throw it out there, is, you know, I, said, I was talking about your oral bacteria. This is really, really important because I have to tell you, my dad recently said, I use Listerine every single day. I won't go without it because he's afraid, he's afraid of getting a cavity. What he's doing is he's disrupting his microbial balance in his mouth with the potential of creating an overload, an overrun of the pathogenic bacteria. This is what creates cavities. This is what can create bad breath. This is what can create um, heart disease. So if we have... Um, infection and bad bacteria in our mouths, it is systemic. It goes systemic. There are, there's a, there are massive studies done on our oral health and our heart health and the, the problem that it's creating um, with heart attacks. And it's, it's really scary, actually. So we have to really keep that in mind. We want to um, use good, healthy, natural toothpaste. I make my own toothpaste. Um, I didn't put it on here. If you have interest in learning about that, um, let me know. I'm happy to share it with you. Um, but there's also, I found one toothpaste that I really, really like that is, that's made. You can't find it mainstream as far as I know. Um, but I order it and I always have it here in the office because it has essentially in it what I put in my own toothpaste. Um, and it, it, you know, it's really good stuff. So again, you know, message me, let me know if you have any questions about that. But Keep that in mind. Um, do oil pulling. Keep your mouth healthy. Brush regularly, but do the right things for it. All right. Okay. Let's see. Moving on. Um, more than that, uh, other studies have found that rivers, rivers and streams have dangerous concentrations of triclosan. So that's a problem. Um, antibacterial junk in our rivers and in our streams. So what they're showing is there's a toxic algae um, that's a major disruptor of the ecosystem, and this triclosan can promote the growth of this algae. Um, and so, I mean, it's easy to avoid. Don't buy antimicrobial, don't buy antibacterial soaps. Uh, it's nasty stuff. Okay. And scented laundry detergents. Oh, this is where essential oils come in, and they're amazing. Um, okay, so we have, you know, they always make it sound so pretty, the ocean breeze and the fresh cotton and these laundry detergents that um, may smell good to me. I guess over, over the years, it's probably a little bit of a mental thing. I just know how toxic it is. And so I smell it. I'm like, oh, it's just too much for me to even take. But um, really, they may smell good, but they're, you know, they're just toxic. They're nasty stuff. And so the fragrances um, is just a cocktail of these non-natural chemicals that are creating more of a toxic burden. And so there's studies that show that a third of all scented detergents contain at least one chemical flagged by the FDA as potentially cancer causing. So think about that, okay? Um, on average, toxic laundry detergents 
uh, emit 17 toxins that go unlisted on the label. Um, and they cause problems ranging from skin irritation to neurological damage. Okay, so let's think about that. So you're cleaning your clothes, you wear them all day, you sleep in your sheets at night. You know, this is talk about a constant inundation of nasty toxic exposure. That's what this is. So um, another thing that I like to do is I like to make my own laundry, laundry detergent. It takes five minutes to make. It's super inexpensive. It's easy to do. You just got to do it. And sometimes I run out and go find a natural detergent because I just don't have time. But it's so inexpensive and easy to make. Um, so I'll tell you about where I found a lot of my stuff that I do. Um, if you are into doing DIY kind of stuff, again, it's so easy and so fast. Um, so that's what I like to do. Another thing that I have found for the dryer. Um, shoot, I'm not going to remember what it's called. There is, I should have prepared for that. I didn't think about it until just now. But there's a dryer, or in the dryer, there's an essential oil that I use that doesn't stain the clothes, putting it on, and it smells really amazing coming out. I might have to post it later if I think about it because it, I don't remember what it is right now. I just can't remember the, the scent. Um, but I use doTERRA. Um, I like doTERRA. I'm sure you know Young Living is fine as well. Um, I don't have a preference. I just myself use doTERRA. Um, let's see. Am I getting a question here? Hold on. Oh, I don't know why that didn't come in, come up. So I just got a Zoom chat from um, from Ashley. Thanks, Ashley. So Purify is a good one. It's not the one I'm thinking of though. It's a it's a single flower essence. And then of course there's On Guard. So doTERRA, um, they have two. The Purify I should try. But what I like about the, it's a, I can't think of it. What I like about the one that I use is it smells later, where if you use a, a lavender, um, you know, the scent seems to go away. And with this one that I use that I can't think of, um, it's like bergamot or something, but that's not it. Um, anyway, the, the scent stays, which I love. And again, it doesn't, you know, you don't get any oil spots on your clothes. I literally just put it directly on the clothes and it smells really good. So, yep. Oh, great idea. I love this. So, um, Ashley also said, I know she really loves doTERRA. Um, wool dryer balls are awesome with the oils. So that's a great idea too. Um, I love that. Thank you. Perfect stuff. Okay. Um, keep it coming, Ashley. <laughs> okay. Let's see where I am. Um, so yeah, more than just the, the detergents, you know, the fabric softeners. Oh my goodness. The fabric softeners kill me. Um, you know, they, you know, they promote them, you know, there's like the bounce or something. They promote it for all of these different things. You can put it in your hair for static electricity. Imagine putting that stuff in your hair, right? You know, so it, then it's in your clothes and, um, they use it. It's so many things. Um, and it's just this toxic nastiness. So they do have some, um, I think some fabric softeners or the, you know, the, um, I guess they're not fabric softeners. They're the, the sheets, the dryer sheets, um, that are a little bit better. Um, but are they truly really good? I don't know for, for myself. I'd rather do what Ashley said. Um, I've got the little, the little, there are these little bouncy balls that are supposed to help with electric static electricity. And then of course the essential oils that I put in, but then there's the bleach and the brighteners and all of these other things that are in the detergents and stuff that we use that are cleaning and killing us all at the same time. <sighs> okay, here's a fun one. Quaternary ammonium compounds or quats. So another type of antimicrobial. Um, same problem as, as triclosan um, has been it's shown to be a skin irritant. Let's see, there's a 10-year study of contact dermatitis found quats to be one of the leading causes. Found in fabric softeners, most household cleaners labeled antibacterial. So this is one, um, if you naturally have um, uh, sensitive skin, you're prone to skin irritation, just be aware that this is another nasty little thing that can pop up and can be potentially creating some of the problems. You know, people come to me with skin issues constantly, you know, and we have to talk about what they're using in their home and around their home to see if that's maybe a possibility. Um, that this is actually what is creating their problem, right? 
Okay, butoxyethanol. So this is a nasty little bugger that is in um, window cleaners, kitchen cleaners, multi-purpose cleaners, um, causes extreme irritation when inhaled um, in an unventilated area like the bathroom. And so um, according to the EPA, there are high levels of 2-butoxyethanol, it's a mouthful, um, in mild cases, uh, can cause sore throats, but over, over time can contribute to pulmonary edema, severe liver and kidney damage. Um, and the law doesn't require that this is listed on the product's labels. Uh, so your best bet is to do a DIY product, you know, from natural ingredients or do some research about what, what some good products are, but stay away from this stuff. Something that you can do um, if you haven't heard of EWG or Envir Environmental Working Group, I bet most of you have. Um, but you can put in either a product name or an ingredient. I just put in EWG and triclosan, right? And it'll come up and it will tell you what it's rated. Um, it's a green, yellow, red rating, and, but it's based on all kinds of stuff. So it'll give you numbers to all these different things that might be in, in a product. Um, and so if you have questions, go there. EWG is an amazing resource. You can put food in there. You can put, put food products in there. Um, sunscreens, chemicals, cleaning products, all kinds of stuff. Stuff for your, your face and your skin. You, wouldn't, you can't even imagine what people put on their skin to, to you know, get rid of wrinkles or to, you know, to... to you know, have the young skin, whatever it is that is incredibly, incredibly damaging and carcinogenic. So just be aware of, of all of it. It's not that hard. It's pretty easy to do. Actually, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Um, and I'll get a little bit deeper into this in a little while, but I love just going and getting coconut oil or maybe an oil combination, mixing it together, putting some in, in some good essential oils. And I put that on my face. Feels amazing. Um, I do use some other natural products as well that I purchase, but that's one of my favorites. Um, I love to feel um, that oil, and it sinks in really quickly, but it just makes it really soft and smooth. So make it easy. Don't spend the money. It's crazy. Okay. Um, ammonia. Oh, this, so anytime you see something that's streak-free, right, um, it's probably ammonia. And it's kind of a nasty little irritant um, and can affect you really quickly. And I mean, you know, you, if you've smelled it, it's pretty intense smell, right? Um, and so there are, you know, there are people who are most susceptible are going to be people with our, you who have lung issues um, or the elderly, but also people who are, you know, inhaling it all the time. Um, like the housekeepers and, and, and building workers and that kind of thing. Um, so they can often develop, if they're around it long enough, um, chronic bronchitis and asthma. And really important to know that if you mix bleach, if you're cleaning with bleach and a product with ammonia, this is a toxic um, poisonous gas, okay? It's poisonous. I believe, I'm pretty sure people have died from this combination. So just be really, really careful with mixing your chemicals. Just don't have chemicals. Chlorine, you know, I think we probably hit on chlorine enough. You know, constant exposure is not a good thing. You know, it's, I, it's very idealistic, um, and I, I get that. But if you have a pool, consider switching it to salt. If you have um, a hot tub that's chlorine, consider switching it to salt. If you, if you can, um, you know, salt is much safer, um, and you, know, you don't get the skin irritation. And you don't get the, it's not, there's not a toxic burden. And then that, that actually creates a healthy space, especially in a hot tub for you to spend your time. So think about that. Another thing to think about is things like steam rooms. Um, where's the steam coming from? Is it filtered or are you inhaling a bunch of bleach? It's hard to say, you know, it's worth asking the question. Um, so, you know, chlorine is in the city water. I mean, it's ugh, just breaks my heart, but it is, it's in the water. Um, and we're exposed to it all the time. I have a filter. Um, I have a resource uh, that's called Healthy Exposure where I get my water filters from that um, I only have a kitchen filter at this point. My goal is to have a whole house filter, but at this point I don't. 
Um, but they, it gets rid of all the chlorine. It gets rid of all the fluoride. It gets rid of all of the junk. Um, I trust them implicitly. I met them at a conference that I went to, which means the people who were putting on the conference trusted them imp implicitly. Um, I will promote them as long and as hard as I can because they are doing the right thing. Um, they have a great story. And so if you have interest, I did put it in the slides coming up. Um, you know, the information that you can go to to go to healthy exposure. The, the, the um, countertop or the under sink, which is the one I have, the under sink filter, they're not very expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks um, and they work really, really well. So consider filtering your water, not just for the chlorine, but for the, all of the other bacteria and uh, the junk that gets into our water that, um, you know, again, it just adds to the toxic burden. And a little bit of a side note, I've said this before, but you know, and I talked about having, you know, two, two of my, my furry family members recently passed. One of them was from osteosarcoma. And what they're showing is high fluoride sits in the bones and cre can create osteosarcoma. Um, they're showing it more and more in our dogs. So filter your water if you can. At, um, it's great. There's another filter. I don't have it. It's, a, it's on top, but it's a Berkey filter. That's a great filter as well. Okay, sodium hydroxide um, or lye. We've heard of lye. It's in soap. Um, it's really extremely abrasive. Um, it's used in oven cleaners and drain cleaners because it does a great job of destroying everything that gets in its way. Um, and so that also makes it super dangerous. So if it touches your skin, if it gets in your eyes, it can cause severe burns um, and it's a sore throat that lasts for days. Okay. The environmental impact. This is what's sad because, you know, there's so many of the things that, you know, our world has become so, so needy for things that we don't really need, um, but it does have an impact on our environment. And so, um, you know, these products, they end up in the water. They end up in our dump yards, right? Um, and so then, you know, once they go down, down the drain, where are they going? into our water and into our streams potentially. Um, and so they're not biodegradable, most of them, um, and they will just sit around and hang around as a pollutant. Um, so their presence harms wildlife um, and can will eventually make it back to us, whether it's in the animals that we eat or in the water that we drink or the plants, all of it, heartbreaking really. Thing actually I think about um, you know I love wild game um, and I think you know I, I you have to wonder of course it's going to be better than than conventionally raised animals but really what you know I don't know how toxic are they from you know like Kansas right you have these beautiful deer and turkey and pheasant um, they're eating off of the um, the uh, sorry, the, I just got an email that popped up. Um, <laughs> silly computers. Um, but they're eating off of the, the, the farms out there that have all of this um, genetically modified, high pesticide, high herbicide, you know, grains. And, you know, is it, is it, you know, how much of a problem is that creating for us? Now, they have the ability to de detoxify as well. But who says that they're much different than us? That genetically, they might there might be some that have some issues in in being able to detoxify. So we've got to think about that. You know, um, we want to do the best that we can, and we can't worry about everything, right? I will certainly um, have a wild raised a wild animal over a conventionally raised animal as far as my meat consumption is concerned. Um, but it's, it's a consideration for sure. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, phosphates, uh, they're, water, they're a water softening mineral um, and they're added you know, to laundry detergents and other cleaners and ooh, they act as a fertilizer. Um, did I go backwards? No, sorry, guess not. So I think I, it's just they're saying this again, but they, they also will um, create a growth of this algae. And so we hit that already, but it's in um, 
So many states actually have banned the use of these phosphates in laundry detergents, but they are still widely used in automatic dishwasher detergents. So um, those are pretty nasty little suckers too, and they'll kill off fish and um, good healthy organisms that we need in our ecosystem. All right, so clean smarter. What does that mean? I mean, we kind of have hit on all of it really. So think about making your own, think about buying, uh, you know, knowing where the toxins are, where they hide, you know, even if this is natural and healthy and all this stuff, there are probably some toxins in it. So knowing the right companies to go to, um, you know, there are just green bottles that say that they're healthy. There's the cardboard box and um, all of these things that make us believe that what we're doing is healthy for us and healthy for the environment when it's really a marketing gimmick. And so, you know, just be, be an aware consumer, you know, um, be your own advocate, be an advocate for your family um, and understand that, you know, knowing what is actually in it and if it doesn't list it, then don't buy it, right? Um, and so know the good companies. Um, let's see, the term non-toxic, has no official def definition. So that's like in food, um, all natural or, uh, you know, whatever, same thing. So they're there or, or even in chickens and eggs where it says uh, free range or cage free, you know, whatever, they're still in barns and they're still packed together. It's not as bad as being in a cage, but you know, again, it goes back to marketing and understanding, um, what, you know, there's, everybody's trying to sell you. Um, and so, you know, be educated enough to buy the stuff that's worth, worth buying, right? And supporting those who are all, who are trying to do the right thing. All right, let's see. So the products that you can trust. Um, so marketers know that being environmentally friendly is, you know, on an uptick, you know, thankfully, I mean, it should be, we want to be environmentally conscious. We are here to be stewards of our environment and our, of our animals and the people around us, right? I truly believe that. Um, but so, you know, they, the marketers really grab onto that. And so, um, this is an interesting one. So aerosol spray cans are labeled no CFCs. It's the, it's the chlorofluorocarbons, um, which deplete the ozone layer. And so they, you know, when it says that consumers believe, okay, I'm doing the right thing, but really they have been uh, banned since 1978. Um, so it really doesn't mean anything at all. So um, I like the term that they've come up with called greenwashing, green marketing. You know, it's just, um, you know, their marketing with stuff that really just makes no difference at all, right? Okay, and so using fewer products, I will tell you that when I clean, here's my favorite, vinegar, you can add vodka, which is an interesting one. Uh, but vinegar and orange oil, you can get these big bottles. It's not the small essential oils, but it's a big bottle of food grade orange oil. Um, and I add that to my cleaners. I add it to, um, if I need to kill bugs in my, in my garden, I add it to my wash um, because it can extend the detergent and it smells amazing. And it's awesome stuff. It smells, it's the best. So it smells like a beautiful orange oil but it is antibacterial um, and it's, it's amazing. So one of my favorite cleaners, vinegar and orange oil, and then maybe add some other essential oils, right? And so um, you can use uh, baking soda is a great cleaner. We just don't have to spend a bunch of money on junk, right? We have the best cleaners available to us for pennies and we go out and we spend all this money on stuff that, that is not cleaning, it's killing us. So, um, and, and then, you know, we've got the, all of the plastics and all of the bottles and, and, you know, it's just, it's so wasteful. It makes me crazy. It really does. And so, um, you know, all of these things we can, you can buy these huge bottles of vinegar that will last you forever. I use vinegar. I use it in my yard. I use it in my laundry detergent. Um, I use it for lots of stuff. And, um, you know, I want to get away from using the bottles, but at least it's not this, these tiny, these you know, bottles that are going in the trash all the time. You know, the vinegar goes a long way. Um, and so we want to dispose of the junk. And there are times when I'm working with clients and I'll say, 
you know, this, whatever it is, food or supplement or something isn't so bad. Maybe don't throw it away. You can keep it. I know you, you paid for it. Um, you know, the toxic chemicals, you just got to throw away. You know, if you, if you have them in the house, there's no point. Just suck it up and throw them away because they're not doing you any good. They're not doing anybody any good. So just get rid of them. Um, and you know, start to start to learn, start to learn, you know, how simple it is to make your own, or if you need to go find, you know, Whole Foods natural grocers, especially natural grocers, they're going to have some really good products that are going to be safe. Right. Okay. Um, some cities do have a uh, facility facilities where they, they'll collect the toxins from your home. Um, and so if it's not available to you, throw them in the trash, don't throw them down the drain. All right. Okay. So, um, I think we kind of already hit on this, but you know, find the companies that you know and trust and that you can appreciate, um, to, that are really out there doing the right thing for you, for your families, for their own families, for the environment. Um, and then, oh, lemon juice. I forgot. Lemon juice is a great one. And, um, yeah, all super easy for, and inexpensive. Um, okay, so resources. What I did here is, sorry, there's some stuff around here. Um, I put together some resources of a few companies that I think are really great. And so they're not all about cleaning stuff, but healthy exposures, the water filters and air filters. If you're thinking about an air filter or a water filter, go to these guys. They are really great at what they do. Um, Beauty Counter. Beauty Counter is cosmetics and lotions and healthy products for the body. I have a friend of mine. Her name is Rachel Blossy. She sells Beauty Counter, and she's such a believer. I love it. But they um, are lobbying against the chemicals that are put in um, to these, these, these products that we put in our bodies all the time because there's no data. And if there is data, a lot of it's bad data. Okay. So beauty counter is a good company doing the right things. Um, and then a lot of my own DIY stuff I get from wellnessmama.com. She's, I say she, I mean, it's her company. I'm just got a ton of people working for her now, but they've got it going on. Um, they're really good at, at recipes at the DIY. I learned how to make my, um, dishwasher soap, my laundry soap, uh, my toothpaste, um, you know, and I've modified my toothpaste a bit, but not the dish soap or the laundry soap. I trust her implicitly, implicitly with that stuff. Um, but that's a really great place to go um, to learn how to make your own stuff. It's just really cool. Um, I put on this mygreenfills.com. This is one that I'm told is great. Okay. I don't have a lot of information on it yet uh, for myself, and I want to check it out for myself but it could be something that might be beneficial. Um, but I wanted to, this is a, this is a company where you purchase the products, you get the, and they send you refills. So you're not constantly, it, you're not constantly buying the bottles and the junk and, and things are going to waste. Plus, um, it's all safe and healthy detergents and, and, you know, dryer sheets and they, um, benefit women in need and things like that. So, I believe a good company. Um, my intent was to have some slides on them, but at this point I'm not because I'm just not totally sure yet. But if you want to look into it, feel free to look into it for yourself. <clears throat> okay. So the sources, um, I just wanted to list the sources that were put together, um, for this talk. If you want to do uh, a little bit of your own digging and reading, um, I think that, that these are some great resources. Um, and, um, yeah, of course, reach out to me if there are questions about any of this stuff. I will, I know I'm really slow at this, but I will send this out to anyone who registered. So know that. So you'll have all of this as well. It's also on my YouTube channel. I always have this stuff on my YouTube channel. So if I am late, later than you want getting this to you, um, then just go to my YouTube channel. I usually have it up there pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I'm just a little slow at things. So appreciate you for coming. Um, I and always enjoy talking about this stuff. Um, I get a little ramped up sometimes, so forgive me, but you know, it's part of it. It's just what I do. Um, I like to be healthy and feel healthy. Um, and uh, thanks, Ashley. Appreciate it. Good to see you, hon. Um, 
but I think it's just so important for people to understand and to be educated on this stuff because these are things that people don't know. They think they're doing the right thing. And I have a mission to get educate as much as I can on as much as I know, right? I don't know everything, but I want to help people to understand how to be healthy in every way. You know, it's not just about food. Although food is huge, it's not just about food. So lastly, um, I have this at the end of every webinar, but on my website, you can take a, uh, a, an assessment and that assessment will, will um, kind of give you a vision, give me a view into what might be going on with your body. If you're having some issues, it rates it. Um, it's part of my intake. It's a small part of my intake that I do with all of my clients. So um, if you want to do that, that would be amazing. And then I'll reach out to you and we'll talk to a little, talk about it a little bit and talk about you and any needs that you might have. And then go from there. You know, if there's anything that I can help with, or if we need to make an official appointment, then all of that is great. Um, but just let me know. I'm here to help. I want to help um, in whatever way that is, even if it's sending you to somebody else, right? So um, let me know if you have questions. I don't see any other questions at this point. Um, I'm grateful to everybody who joined, and I will get this out just as soon as I can. Everybody have a great day. Bye.